Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place due to the outbreak of the coronavirus, this meeting of the Town of Berlin Board of Selectmen will be conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of meet members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. The Town of Berlin will use best efforts to post an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting on the Town's webpage, the Town's YouTube channel, and approved minutes will be posted on mytowngovernment.org. For this me meeting, members of the public who wish to attend the virtual meeting may attend via Zoom webinar uh, in one of two ways, with both audio and video access or by telephone audio only. Should any board member have technical difficulties or lose access to the meeting, the meeting will recess for a short period of time to see whether access can be restored. If not, the meeting will be continued to another date agreed to by a majority of the board or adjourned until our next scheduled meeting. Um, I will not be allowing questions from the public uh, at this presentation. Um, it is a presentation oh. with oh. questions only from the Board of Selectmen and the Personnel Committee. Um, and you can email Margaret with questions. Town admin, else add, town, Margaret? Town, of, town admin at townofberlin.com. Okay. All right, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. It's 618. Um, we have open session, August 3rd minutes to approve. Do I hear a motion to approve? Um, I didn't Move. see those, excuse me, I didn't see those in the folder. Were they in the folder? Um, I don't know if they were in the folder. I think I found them in an email. Yeah, I saw them okay. in an email as well. Okay. Yep. Okay. So do I hear a motion to approve? I moved. I second. Okay. All righty. Any comments or questions? All right. Then we'll take a vote. Uh, Keith, aye. Stone, aye. Hawkins, aye. Okay. That's unanimous. Um. We have some old business, uh, final review of the host community agreement with C3 uh, regarding the proposed retail marijuana store, uh, 64 Banner Road. Um, did you all have a chance to take another look after uh, our last meeting? Indeed. So Margaret, what happens after here? After here? Um, if the board decides that it is in final form tonight, you do have um, you do have the flexibility to actually approve the uh, host community agreement tonight, subject to legal counsel's approval as to form. And we do know that legal counsel will approve it as to form because she has actually recommended all the changes to this. And then um, I have emailed the applicant. Once the host community agreement is approved, there is a certification that needs to be done that we have executed the host community agreement and he can proceed with the state licensing process at the CCC. He can also begin the process, um, the local process for the site plan review. So, um, and that's going to be subject to ZBA's uh, availability for hearings. So he has a couple of paths that he can take after this. For now, the board's work is going to be over once this is approved. So what are we looking at for time frame ish? I know oh. it might be hard to, I know, I know, um, but I figured I'd ask, are we talking yeah. a quarter? Are we talking six months? Are we talking nine? Mm. Yeah. Any, I think any? that, I think to, to be fair, it's at the very least six months. I know okay. that there are a lot of establishments or, or um, applicants in the queue at the CCC. So that alone is going to take some significant time. The good news is that in the packet that he submitted or that C3 submitted to the board, he had already really begun preparing his license application. So it seems that they're going to be ready to submit quickly and get in the queue. But I would say safely six months at least. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were there any other questions? 
Everything looks good. Do, does anyone care to make a motion? I make a motion to accept the host community agreement between the town of Berlin and C3 as reviewed by uh, town legal counsel. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, then I guess if there's no questions, we'll take a vote. Uh, Keith, aye. Stone, aye. Hawkins, aye. All right, that's unanimous. That is great. That is a first for the board. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> um, moving on to new business. We have a cultural council appointment of Sandra Reardon. Hey, she wants to come back. Bring her on back. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm all for it. <laughs> See, we got to move. There you go. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, then we'll take a vote. Keith, aye. Stone, aye. Hawkins, aye. All right. Congratulations, Sandra. Welcome back. Yay. Yay. Um, <laughs> 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 <Woo -hoo! laughs> and uh, we have a September 1st state primary warrant to vote to sign. So did we ever figure out, remember the last time we met, I don't know, a week ago, two weeks ago, 85 years ago, um, <laughs> that we were debating or didn't know like an end date on this. Is that part of this discussion at all? Um, no, this is actually the state primary warrant. The one that the okay. board, the warrant that the board actually opened last time was a special town election warrant. And just okay. to give the board a, a brief update on that issue, um, we are in communications with the, um, the state's elections um, division. Um, and hopefully the elections division is in communications with the district's legal counsel. So there's going to be more on that at your next meeting. Um, but I'm not, I'm not proposing any additional action on that particular warrant at this time. And this follows the state guidelines of 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and not the condensed one that we had for the town election? These are the mandated hours. Okay. Okay. Do I hear a motion to sign the document? So moved. Second. Okay, then we'll take a vote. Keith, aye. Stone, aye. Hawkins, aye. That's unanimous. Mary? An actual signature will be needed for that. So um, okay. leave that with Margaret or the board table. Do we also, we all need to come in. Can you yes. all come in? It'll be on the board's table. Okay. By the end of the week or do you need it, it tomorrow? It has to be posted by a constable no later than the 24th. That means you and then I get a constable to, to do it. Okay. Okay, so the next day or so? That would be helpful if you guys can do it by weekend. Okay. Maybe, okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. I'll aim for Friday morning myself. All right. Uh, is that all the business we have to take care of, Margaret? That is all the business for tonight. Okay. Then we'll wait a few minutes to start the, or see if, uh, well, we've got Sutarian is here. We're just waiting for Claire and um, consultant is here as well. Okay. Just... You guys did this meeting just to show to me that you can do meetings in less than three hours, right? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible. <laughs> See, you notice that I didn't have any questions today. So usually when I, we don't have questions, it goes quick, quick. <laughs> hey. I had a couple of quick things for Margaret, but Margaret and I both happen to be here at six early for the meeting. And so I got those all taken care of. We'll see about email protocols. Mm -hmm. I know when, when people recognize that I'm on the select board, I'm gonna get more questions or less because the, the guy about the false alarms actually didn't know that I was on the select board I don't think he even believed me when I said, oh, I'll just email the the, flea, the fire chief right now with this sure. thing. Like, oh, yeah, sure, you know. <laughs> um, excuse me, Mary, feel free to let um, the members of the personnel committee and the consultant come in. Um, we're just kind of in a, in a holding pattern for a few minutes, that's all.
Mary, do I need to sign um, Sandy Reardon's appointment sheet like I have in the past? Uh, actually, Scott's the clerk now, and in light of COVID, <laughs> I've e-signed for Scott. So. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I actually ha also have access to DocuSign, and so I could e-sign things even myself sometimes, too. Want me to send you the letter, or it's in the folder no. if you want to sign it? I I'll be in Friday to sign the other thing, so if you want me to actually to sign things, I can sign everything on Friday. She, in this oh. instance, hoping to get signed in, uh, hopefully sworn in by Eloise tomorrow. Okay. And Friday's cultural council meeting. J j just e-sign it for me at this point then, yeah. Okay, will do. Welcome, Sue and Sandy. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Hmm. Oh, shoot. Susan, where's the dogs? Are they out of, uh, are they out of the room? I'll mute it really quick if they start talking. <laughs> They're upstairs right now. So Claire, I think, said she might be a little bit late. Am I correct? A couple minutes. Okay. <clears throat> you want me to run down around the corner and bang on her door? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the way that I've been running lately, I'll see you back here about 7.30. <laughs> We've got two minutes and maybe um, maybe we could start with the introductions and the basic information if um, if Sandy would like to do that. Oh, sure. Well, in, in, a, in, a, in Sandy, just two minutes at 6.30 sure. we, can, we can begin, okay? Okay, sure, yeah. Quick. So Margaret, while we're killing time, um, uh, looking at your email, and I know that library septic obviously takes precedence, so, you know, that's fine. There was a bunch of documents that Judy had sent me as well on uh, the solar stuff on the barn. Do you want those? Do you care? Margaret went away. Margaret went away. Margaret went away. <laughs> she'll, she'll be back. <laughs> she, she's probably grabbing a quick bite. <laughs> Well, better be quick. Mm. So how's the personnel committees? Um, are you doing virtual meetings? How are they going? They're going well. Because we're having enough of them that 20 minutes to 45 minutes is the max and we're out of there. Those are good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, what was Claire's show that she always had to leave for eight o'clock? Oh, yeah. We have a meeting. Claire's got to be out of there for Survivor. That's what it was. Yep. No, well, she Survivor, watches it. She needed to go. She watches it with her mom. So oh. that's, their, that's their time. So she has to get to her mother's house to see Survivor. <laughs> oh, Margaret's talking, oh. but no one's hearing. Oh, you need okay. to. I'm talking okay. and I'm muted. Oh, okay. the chair. Um, it is 6.30 now, and um, once the personnel committee does have a quorum, they'll just have to call. Well, no, they won't call to order because they are not posted, so it's individual right. questions tonight. All right, so um, through the chair, if you'd like, um, Sandy, to give a little, a little, Sandy, if you'd like to give a little brief bio um, and uh, introductions, um, and we can, you can get started. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, we've been working on your compensation and classification study, 
as well as your personnel policies and job descriptions for the town of Berlin. Um, and we've made a lot of progress and I'm here tonight to give you an update on everything. Um, just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, uh, I am the president of Human Resources Services and we've been providing uh, technical assistance to cities and towns for uh, more than 30 years now. And uh, we are specialists in municipal HR work and general management. And uh, I have my master's in public administration. And I think I've worked in almost every city and town in Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> so the, the consultant team includes not only myself, but also um, uh, Buzz Stapchinski, who's my partner, and also uh, Tony Teresi. Um, so uh, this, this project and also uh, Liz, Liz uh, Mensinger uh, as well. So there are uh, four of us who have been working diligently uh, on this project. Uh, wanted to give you um, an update. Uh, it started with the orientation sessions that we had and employees filled out position analysis questionnaires and uh, we collected all of those and then we rated the jobs using uh, a rating system and we uh, updated job descriptions and actually you're going to be getting job descriptions from us uh, this week quite a quite a lot of them so um, and I think the study includes about I don't know I think there's between 50 and 55 positions is that right Margaret and um, we collected market data from the market, uh, looking at comparable communities and uh, that would be comparable to Berlin and we collected salary uh, information. Uh, and we've put together um, a sal some, an updated salary schedule and classification plan uh, for the town. And that's one of the things that we would like to uh, present you with this evening. Uh, and <clears throat> we have also done some costing out of uh, you know a couple of different options. What we're going to review with you tonight is draft preliminary. It's not etched in stone, uh, but just to give you uh, an update of everything that we're doing throughout this process. I've been giving um, Margaret a lot of different uh, policies that she's asked for. We're working on the consolidated policy, and that will um, probably be coming uh, in September sometime. The policy. So this month we're finishing the compensation uh, classification and job descriptions and then next month we will be finishing uh, the comprehensive uh, policies um, and, and with an eye also towards your, your bylaws as, as I understand that you have. So um, <clears throat> we'll, um, so I think what I could do now is just uh, bring up some uh, documents uh, to show you uh, so, so you can have a, a feel as to what we're um, doing. I could even bring up a, a sample job description to show you what one might look like. Um, but anyway, uh, do you want to share your screen with me? And then, uh... Sandy, you should be able to just click on the share screen button at the bottom of your screen. Great, I got it. Yep. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. This is great, thank you. So now um, you're on my, uh, the color scheme has changed. Okay, I don't know what that means, but anyway, you're, I'm still here, you, you're all there, right? Yep. You can, yeah. yep, okay. All right, I'm gonna go into my uh, Berlin folder here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is bring up uh, the market data report. Now, when we, um, when we collected this data, um, you know, from the, from the various towns, we had to select which comparable communities we would use. And that was a little uh, tricky for Berlin because you are uh, a very small town surrounded by a lot of bigger towns, but there's a lot of industry um, around you and you're a 495 community. And so we had to get a little bit creative. So, uh, and we wanna include, you know, contiguous towns. So we looked at population, location, uh, form of government. We looked at uh, equalized valuation per capita. We also looked at, um, you know, things like uh, the, e the um, income per capita and, uh, you know, uh, the bond rating and 
how your organization were set up, how each functional area in, in, the, in the town was set up. And so that helped us to come up with this list of comparable communities, which include Air, Boxborough, Boylston, Hudson, Littleton, Maynard, Northborough, Paxton, Shirley, Sterling. I think we did like a radius of, uh, I don't know, we might have done a radius of like 50 miles and said, okay, within 50 miles, what would be the best uh, comparables? And, um, you know, while we have a big community like Hudson, it's contiguous, so it's important. We also have, you know, Boxborough, which is much smaller. Um, and where, you know, some of these communities are in tight closer to you and some of them a little further out towards Worcester, like Paxton or Sterling. Um, some are Route 2 communities like Shirley, you know, Littleton's a 495, you know, um, Air is, you know, a, a Route 2. So we, so we had to take all of that um, into consideration. And then what we did was we sent everyone a, um, a survey and we asked them to give, a, give us their uh, salary and wage uh, data and information. So um, we collected the data by each title, as you can see, and we have accounting, administration, veteran services, assessing, Council on Aging, Fire and EMS, Health, Highway, Land Use Inspections, Library, Police, Town Clerk, Treasure Collector, and I think only the police are union, and we may have collected some data, but they would not be uh, classified because they're union uh, jobs. And then we looked at the, so for each piece of data that we collect, the top number is the minimum, so that's the minimum of the range. Uh, typically municipalities will have uh, pay ranges for their, on their salary schedules. So the top is the minimum, the bottom is the maximum of the range. It's not the actual, it's the range and it is a base pay. So in local government, we typically uh, operate within minimum and maximum. Virtually everybody has in local government, a salary schedule with an entry, a mid-level, and, and a maximum. So here, then we um, the data points is um, and oh, I just want to also mention if there's a blank, that means that it could mean a couple of things. It could mean that we didn't that the community did not have a comparable uh, position. Typically, if 75% of the job is comparable, we'll include it. Um, if, or it could have meant that we felt the data just didn't, was not comparable, or for whatever reason, we were not able to get it from the town. Um, so everybody received these custom surveys, they responded. Uh, if they didn't respond, then we got the data through their websites. You know, a lot of towns have their comp and class plans that they send us. Now the data points is, the number of pieces of data that we collect for each position. So, so even though you survey 10 or 12 communities, uh, you might only have five that are a match or seven. Um, <clears throat> so, so this is uh, the draft. And then we look at the average, uh, you know, all the statistics, the range, the median, the 75th percentile, um, you know, the, how, what the variance is, you know, how Berlin, compares to the market at the average, what's the high, you know, what, what's the variance? It doesn't mean, this percentage does not mean that you, uh, that, uh, you know, that you just add that percentage to the position. It just shows how high or low you are to um, the market. Now, um, if, you know, for, for statistical comparisons, typically if, if a position is, 10% low or 10% above, we consider that to be within the range of average. So we only get very concerned when we see numbers like 19%, 15%, 14%, 37%, um, you know, um, 20. So it's all, it's all over the place. For some jobs, um, we found uh, you know, you were right on the number, but for a lot of positions, you were below um, the market. And it just could be for a number, it could, 
you know, most likely it's because your plan was old and it was outdated and it needed to be uh, brought up to uh, date. So uh, that most likely um, is the reason why there's so many, you know, that have huge differences compared to the average. Um, so, uh, in the, and in the final report, when, we, when we're at that stage, we will, of course, um, you know, have more graphic, you know, visualization for you uh, to see. So let me, um, let me just pull this over here so we can see for, um, you know, there's, there's a position here. Uh, all right. Uh, 90%. So superintendent uh, facilities. Um, so, you know, things like that, you know, might be high, uh, you know, so, so that, that's what this means. Now, it doesn't mean if it's 28% low compared to the variance that you automatically add 28%, obviously. Um, so here, uh, you know, and there could be some anomalies, like, for example, with the town clerks, Sometimes if they're elected positions, they just get a wage um, and there's really no range. Um, so we, we look at, at all of that. We also will be providing uh, as supplemental data, um, you know, through our database, something called um, ERI data, which is the Economic uh, Research Institute. And uh, we will provide that for um, every, for every uh, position uh, as an additional benchmark uh, for data. That's sort of like supplemental data that we will give. Um, so this is just, so this is just the market data that we have. Now, that's, this is the raw data. So then when we, um, then what we have here is the draft uh, plans. So based on the data, it helps us to determine the parameters of the salary schedule. So um, this is, I'm gonna just go forward to your old, um, this is what you currently have. And um, it's quite compressed. Um, you only have, you know, 10 grades. Um, and it's, you know, it, it kinda, um, the, the percentages are, you know, very, um, so it's, it's a little bit compressed. We needed to add, um, more grades to allow for additional uh, growth in the scale. So we came up with this scale. This matches the market. It also matches the, the minimum wage. Um, and we looked at 40 hours a week for Berlin. Your, your, your employees hourly is 40 hours. Um, the, uh, the hours per year is 2080, so that's 52. And then the percentages between the steps is 2.2%. And then it, you know, it varies what the percentage will be, excuse me, between the grades because each grade will match uh, the market. Um, and so we show here the hourly, the, the uh, weekly, and then the annual. Now keep in mind when you put this in your payroll, it may round it out to four or five. Um, so you would take the salary schedule and put it in whatever payroll system that you have. Um, so that's it. And we went to, um, a, we added a few more uh, grades. Um, I think we've got 13. Um, so, and then the first couple of grades, they're not shown here, but in the final report, they'll be shown their blank grades. And those will be just in case you want it add anybody, you know, a, a low level job, or sometimes you have an intern or a seasonal or some, something that you would want to add. So it's all, uh, it's got 12 steps. And, um, you know, it typically every year, either at budget time or on your anniversary, you know, you get a step, which is very typical. Uh, it's, it was uh, updated to FY21. So it's, uh, an FY21 plan. So we factored the cost of living into that. So this is um, the uh, classification plan. Um, and uh, 
and it's just a ranking of the jobs. We use a rating system that uh, has 14 different factors. Uh, you know, things like education, experience, um, accountability, uh, supervision, um, confidentiality, uh, judgment, uh, complexity, problem solving, things like that, physical requirements for the job. And, um, and for each uh, position, we, we rate them against all of these 14 factors, and then the position gets a certain number of points. And that helps us to rank the jobs. However, we also use some common sense and we use the market data as well. But that's a good uh, barometer just to help us to rank them. And then also the market helps us as well with, with this. But the internal equity is, is very important for all of these jobs. So, um, so these are, you know, we, we've got, you know, from the library page, you know, all the way to the top of the to town account. Now, now there are some positions that are contract positions like police chief, town administrator. While we collected some data, um, we wouldn't put them on the classification plan because they have independent contracts. Uh, so that's for this. And I have to say, you know, as you look at this, this is just the raw information preliminary before we give, we issue a final report. And um, and it's uh, you know it's not etched in stone yet. It's draft, and we still need to go over it with the administration, um, and also with the department heads. The department heads will have an opportunity to review everything, uh, to review a draft report uh, before it's finalized. But we just wanted to introduce you to all of this. Now, um, before I get to that, let me. Okay, this is. Um, this is our comparison chart to um, Berlin. And here, what we typically do is once we've got them all rated, we look at the mins and the max for Berlin. And then we look at the market. And here we looked at, we collected data for FY20 and then we annualized it to, um, uh, excuse me, we, we collected data for FY20 and then we applied a, a COLA for FY21 of 1.5%. And then uh, based, so it was the FY21 uh, that we used to come up with a proposed FY21. Um, so you don't wanna use FY20 data to make an FY21 schedule, you know, otherwise it would be outdated. Um, so, and much to everybody's surprise um, with the, uh, uh, you know, COVID and the pandemic, communities are still going ahead, many with coal as we found, we did a little survey to find out and many actually are giving uh, 2%. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, it, it varies by community to community, of course. And then uh, the proposed plan is here for FY, and then the grade, you know, which is based on the rating. And then the final report, you'll actually, uh, in the final that we give to the town, uh, we'll actually give all the points and the ratings and all of that. But this is for every single uh, position. And again, keep in mind, everything is arranged. So we look at a minimum and a maximum for Berlin, a minimum and a maximum for, you know, the market, the minimum and the maximum, you know, for the proposed plan. And then those are based on, you know, the base wages. And then where people fall within that, really within the range that we come up with, really depends on uh, the employee or performance or longevity, a number of things. So this is your salary schedule. So typically an employee is placed on the step closest to, but just above what they're currently making. So they don't, you know, so you don't cut anybody's uh, wage. Uh, now that is at a minimum. Now what we do is we costed it out both ways for you. This is uh, just to put everybody at the minimum, okay? Just to get them on the scale. It comes out to 35,452 for implementation. Now, if you wanted to move employees to the next highest hourly wage step, assuming that they were gonna get a step increase, then uh, we've added 
you know, we, we did a calculation as well based on putting them on the next step. And that would be, um, you know, that would be a little bit more money, 46,248. That's just to get them on the plan. That's for the implementation. And then there are some positions that are not, um, that, that are different, you know, that we put on the plan, but right now um, it's hard to calculate because, you know, your animal, you know, inspector, your inspectors get various fees or a percentage of the fee and so forth. So um, it's hard to translate that exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, th that would be a, um, a policy decision if you were going to put them on the uh, classification plan. I think we, I think we did, uh, uh, I don't know if we put them, yeah, animal inspector. Yeah, I think, yeah, we did, we did put them on the plan. They really should be on the classification plan. So th these are the, uh, the drafts, um, if you will, uh, of, of the, um, you know, of, of the plans. This is not the full report. The full report is much more uh, comprehensive. I should just show you what a, um, a sample job description will look like. And, um, and, and you know what, we are still um, working on these so that they're, they're very draft. So I will finish tomorrow, tomorrow, the next day you will have them. So um, you know, the, this is the format. You have a position purpose, essential functions, um, you know, recommended minimum qualifications, knowledgeability and skill, physical requirements, supervision, um, you know, and then the job environment. Um, so we are just, um, you know, I, I just wanted to show you this so you know that we have worked on them. They are done. It's just a matter, you can probably see them all here. We just have to um, uh, go through our editing process. So um, having, um, so I'll put this back up now. So um, the next steps now, you're probably wondering, okay, well, what, what are the next steps? Um, the next steps are to, well, when we give the job descriptions back to the town, all the employees will have an opportunity, especially the department has to review the job descriptions. Um, we will also um, uh, need to uh, have a, a draft report written with the narrative uh, that will uh, be presented, you know, um, later on in this month um, uh, to the department heads. We'll probably have a virtual meeting with them to get their input. And then we will um, then finalize the report. And once the um, comp and class study is all done, we also put together for the town, we not only do we give this in hard copy or PDF, um, uh, we, we also uh, put together a, a client web portal. So all the electronic documents and all the tools are there for the town uh, to use uh, in the future. It's for the administration. It's not a public web portal. It's, it's really for the administration so they can manage uh, the comp and class plan, they have the tools to manage it in the next, you know, next few years. Uh, you, you don't want to always have to hire a consultant every year to update it. If we give you the tools, you can do it. And you just hire a consultant when you need a major review like you did this year. Um, and, um, but, you know, of course, if you want to hire us every year, that's okay too. We're, we're happy to do that. We're happy to come back every year. But, um, but you know, we know money's tight. So we like to give that, we leave the town with this web portal. It's, it's wonderful. And it has all the, the tools that you need. And then, um, but we don't, you know, we are not a, um, we're not a tech company. So um, we don't update it every year. You know, it's just sort of like a one go-to place for all the study documents. And then it's up to you to update them on, on a year to year basis. Um, and then what we're also going to do is the policies. Uh, the policies will uh, be done, like I said, in September. They ended up being a lot more complicated than we anticipated because of the COVID-19. Uh, and, um, you know, um, it, it really, um, uh, it, it's taking a little bit longer because there are, the policies have been affected now by certain things uh, that 
that are, you know, that have to be addressed in the in the policy. So, uh, so that's not a problem, and we'll be we'll be doing that, and that'll be done uh, in September. Um, so that that's where we are. We hope at some point we can give a final presentation to everybody, probably um, for the whole report. I would recommend that we wait when the whole thing is done. Maybe you know the end of September. We can give a final presentation to everybody. The uh, Yes. Sorry, I, I can wait till you're done, but I, I have a couple yeah. questions. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm done. I'm ready to take questions now. Yep. Um, uh, your your analysis of what this is going to so your your snap on what this is going to cost the thirty six thousand does that take into account that some people would under your plan would potentially get lower pay because I can't imagine we're going to ultimately lower someone's pay if they're sort of above the range because your spreadsheet says some people's like plus ten and twenty percent. Uh, oh yeah, no, no, it doesn't. It nobody will be lowered in pay. Nobody's pay would be cut okay. or lowered. So the worst uh, scenario for those people is they might be grandfathered, you know, or yep. they call it redlining. You know, you've been red circled. Yeah. Um, the plan says that it's for fiscal year 21, which we're currently in. And so uh, I, I'm new to all this, but my, my guess is we're planning implementing this with fiscal year 22. Am I incorrect or correct on that? Um, well, I, I, I don't know if you were going to go back to July 1 or not. I'm not sure. Okay. So I think that's a policy decision that um, you would hey. um, have to decide if you want to implement it now or for, um, I don't know if you want to do it retroactive or if you want to do it for the next fiscal year. May right. I just, may I, may I weigh in on that? Um, sure. So the uh, FY21 budget, um, and I know a personnel committee is aware of this too, the FY21 and the board, um, it contains a contingency account. And part of that contingency account, I can't remember the total amount, contained a $33,000 amount for adjustments okay. that might be needed on this. Okay, that's about, that's it. Okay. And then you talked about adding grades, but I, I think you have the same number of grades, you just changed the numbering system because we used to have grades one to 10, and now we have grades three to 13. Yeah, but what you don't see is there will be two <laughs> more grades at the bottom that you don't see here. No, you're right. You're right, but there will be, there will be two more. You know, we only um, there in the final there will be uh, two grades that are blank that will be below three. And so then you not ultimately that, are adding. Yep, we're adding not, some at the bottom. Yep. Right, and then not that it needs to be part of your study, but there is, uh, a, there is another minimum wage increase in January of twenty two, right? January of twenty. And it's January 21, it, we go to 1350. Yes, yes, January yes, 22, yes. we're going to go to 1425. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes, yep. Yeah. yeah, and eventually, I think within three years, it goes to um, 15. 15 or, yep. or, yeah, 15. So we have it, yeah. Oh, a couple yeah. more years left. Okay. Yeah. That, those were my question. I think this is fairly well done. I, I could follow it pretty easily. I understand what you were trying to do. Uh, uh, you know, I'd be interesting to see after what the personnel committee tweaks they do to it, but uh, I understand the, the methodology you use pretty nicely. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. And um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? So Margaret, Sandy, Claire, uh, when are we going to be able to take a look at this data? Because it's, I mean, actually like take it apart and look at it and come back with questions. I mean, because as, you know, Sandy was scooting through, I'm like, oh, I wonder what that one was. Oh, I wonder what that one was. So I'd really kind of like some time to be able to go through and then come back with questions either to you, Margaret, or to Claire and company or Sandy. Do you, do you mean you'd like to have the information? Yeah. yeah. Like yes, like, like a hard copy. Yes, a hard copy that, you know, Sandy has realizing that, everything, you know, is potentially subject to change, you know, understand, but to be able to spend more than, you know, 25 minutes on it and go through it and be able to ask some more pointed questions. Because right now they're just, it's global. I'd rather start to try and dig in. 
So, Sandy, I know um, I know you're hesitant um, to um, to share preliminary draft uh, data. Um, are you okay with um, clearly noting that the data is preliminary so uh, Peg and others can formulate questions? Yes, yes, as long okay. as everybody knows that it's draft and that it could still, you know, everything can still change until we give you that final report. This is really just an update and a preliminary, you know, but we wanted to see, we wanted to show you where we were going with it. Um, so I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Um, that that's fine. You could give everybody a hard copy. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what, Martin, if you just want to water stamp the back of it and just write draft. Sure. No. I've got a, I've got a draft stamp. I know you got a yeah. draft stamp. We see lots of your draft stamps. Yeah. I would just say for, you know, draft for discussion purposes only kind of thing. That's all. You know, so if I were at a meeting, I probably would give it to you in hard copy that way. So perhaps um, Sandy can email Margaret and Margaret could disseminate the information. Yes. Or just, or, or slap it up in a folder. So this way we know that. Yeah, um, I'd like to like have um, access to it. Yeah, let me, um, let me just put it all together in a PDF with a nice cover and properly labeled and I'll send it to Margaret uh, first thing in the morning. Is that good? Oh, absolutely. Well, Okay. Is it, is it oh, worth waiting right. till after the personnel committee meeting tomorrow? Because they, if I, I wouldn't mind having their sort of some of their inputs and potential adjustments to it before I looked at it in more detail. Um, so, no. so I'm I sure I, I don't really understand the question. I mean, you do, you want it in, you mm -hmm. wanted the copies or? I think you wanted the copies. I'm just saying instead of doing it first thing in the morning, wait another 24 hours until after the personnel committee meeting gets the chance to do some adjustments because aren't they planning on doing that tomorrow? Oh, no. No, there's no meeting for personnel. Mm -hmm. There, well, there's a meeting for personnel, but only to approve a couple of paths. Right. Um, but okay. if they That's have this, they could discuss it. Yeah, because on my town government, it comes up your meeting tomorrow was canceled. Wow, that wasn't true when I looked at it. Oh, it, that's a different screen. There, there were two postings and one got canceled and the other is still in effect. Oh, there it is, okay. Yeah, so I, I should get it to you to first thing tomorrow just yeah. so you all yeah. have okay. it. And then, yeah, I'll get it to Margaret. Sure. Yeah. And um, I, hope to, I hope to have all the job descriptions to you tomorrow too. So that would be something maybe, you know, if I have them all done by tomorrow, um, you could look at at your meeting tomorrow night as well. Blair. Oh, yep. Unmute. 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 Am I okay can now? Yeah. yeah. Can, you hear yeah. Me? can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Claire, you sounded like a Verizon commercial. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, um, <laughs> I just wanted to thank Sandy for all the work she's done on this. It's, it's, a great job. Um, we really, I, I love the way she put it together and I, I love the way she makes it easy to understand for people who may not be familiar with all this type of material. So um, kudos to you, Sandy, for all the work you put into this. And we were very excited to have this done and now we can start moving forward and taking a closer look at everything. So thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Are there any other questions? I can't see everybody. Uh, oh, no more questions? I'll just, right. I'll just make a comment. I'll, I'll echo um, Claire's sentiment and thank uh, Sandy. Um, Sandy, typically, um, when I asked her if she would do this to give the board and the personnel committee kind of a preliminary look, um, Sandy typically does this when the report is more in final form, but I thought it was important um, to present this to the board and personnel committee to allow um, some comments and questions to start circulating. So thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you for the courtesy. Thank you so much, Sandy. It was great to have you tonight. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. So I guess I'm going to sign off now. So, okay. Bye, right. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah, good night. Bye. Bye.
All right. Are we all signing off too? Yes. Yeah. I don't know if there's any other agenda items. So nope. do we need a motion to adjourn? Sure. Moved. Uh, second. There you go, Scott. You got to be quick here. Moved. Here we yeah. go. Yeah. All right. All right. Keep eye. Stone eye. Hawkins eye. Bye, neighbor. <laughs>